Hey there, it's Mazzy. I'm here with Dr. Robert. And we're, the doctor is in. We're doing the battle. The battle. The smackdown. What are these things called? Uh, record cleaning machines. Of the ultrasonic. We're talking, I have the Humming Guru coming in at $420 US from Hong Kong. All plastic parts. I've done now about 300 records so far, get maybe 400 with the Humming Guru. We're going to talk about our two experiences and we're going to do a demonstration of the big smackdown, the battle of the two ultrasonics. <clears throat> Doctor, what do you have in front of you? Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm fresh from the operating room, so excuse me, I haven't quite gotten out of my uh, work clothes yet. but. Um, this is um, uh, the record cleaner that I first bought nine years ago, I want to say. It's a glass audio desk. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's a German model. So, so German versus Hong Kong in the ultrasonic go. world. It's, it's but yours is more, yours is like, so, yours is like a BMW or a Volkswagen or a, and this is like a Toyota. It's, it's not it's, a Toyota. Or it, a, it's heavier. Plastic. But these, I, you know, I mean, I have had... I, I love the, the functionality. I love what it does. It does a great job cleaning records. But um, this is now my fourth of these machines. Now, are you, wait, let me just ask you this. First of all, what, how much is this machine? The very first one I bought was $4,000. $4,000? A lot, right? Is that like, how, what's that in Deutschmarks? I don't know. Okay. It'd be euros. So well, maybe by the time you bought it with Deutsche, yeah, or no, it was I, euros. I can't remember. Okay, but um, it uh, you know the the first one I bought four thousand uh, bucks back in the day. There weren't a lot of competing alternatives, and uh, it cleaned four thousand records and then went kaput. The motor went kaput. Is kaput the German term for it breaking down? Correct. Okay. And that's okay. why I used that word. Got it, got so, it. <laughs> so, okay. So uh, I, but I said For Stunkena. So I don't even is that Yiddish? I don't it's yeah. probably Yiddish. Okay. Yeah. My grandmother used to say that. Okay. okay. Yeah, well, she, my grandmother pro never had an ultrasonic uh, record cleaner. Yeah, mine either. Okay, yeah, poor things. But um, it, it lasted four thousand records, roughly, and at least four years. And I sent it back to the place I bought it from, and they have a program. They they didn't replace it free, but they gave me a substantial discount. So the second one I got was fifteen hundred bucks. So okay. Their item broke after a year. No, no, after four years. Or after four years. Four thousand records. And they allowed you to pay fifteen hundred dollars more to get a new one. Correct. To and replace the old like one. Like a trade up. You know? Trade up. Okay, the, the warranty rather, had ended. Rather than repair. Yeah. And okay. and, and, Fair and enough. I sort of did that math, you know, four thousand records. I really I think certainly high end records, cleaning them adds at least a dollar in value. Um, you know, if it's a four dollar record or a three dollar record or a five dollar record, maybe a cleaning doesn't really gain you another buck, but it adds value. So I didn't feel bad about that investment. Um, okay, you're, you're 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 freaking me out here. You're looking like uh, that villain in Batman with that thing. Oh, I know you want to look at the dead wax in that, but you I have do. to have you have to have it on. Okay, I I, I okay. never wear it. I, let me say this. You is look like what's what's the guy? Uh, uh, the, what, not. Uh -oh. <laughs> The penguin? Not the penguin. <laughs> the the guy who wore the ba Bannon. Ban oh, uh, Darth Vader. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay, here I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at this record right now, so, so we can that take I can that get off. Get this silly okay. thing off my head. But we now let me let me interject here. We both have chosen one record to clean for this demonstration for this battle of the ultrasonic cleaners. So. Okay. Oh. Why don't you show the cover? What are you What are you cleaning? I, I, will, I will. Yeah. Well, this is not nearly as nice. As, and this is the benefit, by the way, of light um, and I guess magnification. But this is Here, the record that I brought. Ooh, that's and Bridget Bardot. Recently, recently acquired um, from so a store that's going out of business down in Portland. You picked a Bridget Bardot record. I picked. Let me just show you. We'll get into. Yeah. Let's... I picked up <laughs> Loretta Lynn's fist. City. No comment. Ouch. <laughs> Loretta Lynn, Fist City. I didn't even know she had an album called Fist City. But um, sounds, anyway, and this is on sketchy. DECA. DECA Records, Fist City. Okay, that's what we're going to clean. So, tell me again. So, 
How many times have you had to trade this in? Well, that's what I, I was, I, you know, I was going through my personal history of uh, ultrasonic. Oh, you, look, you, look, you look a little like, um, what's the guy in Springsteen's band? Not Little Stevie. Oh, uh, no, you mean Little Stevie. He yeah, likes to wear like yeah, a... Okay, like okay. A, oh, you look yeah, like, a, what's the, the Jewish um, uh, senator from uh, the East Coast? Who wears one of these now? Oh, I know who you yeah, mean. Uh, sh not Schumer, but no, yeah. he's like. Unfortunately, he's, he, yeah, yeah, okay. he's a good. We, I think yeah. he's a good man. He's, he's a great man. man. That's right. So this is my Grateful Dead skull cap here. I'm just oh, gonna, it is. I, I, I see the little skeleton. Yeah, so. so okay. So um, how much have you spent on? How many of these have you had now? Well, this is now my fourth. So the the history was the first one four thousand records. Second one, 1500 bucks, 5,000 records, right? So a better and better economic proposition. The third one, they upped it a little bit uh, to like 1700 to replace that one. And the third one just never really broke in. And then after, um, after one year and about 1,000 records, it broke down. And this is where I want to compliment the company, and I, I, I'm not going to come up with their name, and, I, and I'm not here to say their name, but the company that sells them within North America or that I bought it from here in North America, uh, replaced that one as if it was under warranty for free. So this is now for me actually a brand new fourth record cleaner. I've only cleaned about 50 records on this guy so far. And so, 50, okay, can, can, may I ask you if you don't mind sharing with the our lovely uh, audience out there, how much invested are you in this machine over eight years, about? You mean how much money have I spent? Yes. So that if you add that up, it's uh, it's seventy two hundred dollars total. Okay. So seventy two hundred dollars. But I've cleaned over ten thousand records. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just I, and again, with the humming guru, I spent four hundred twenty. So what is seven thousand divided by four hundred? How many of these could I buy? For that, so four hundred. You figured out in the audience. We, we don't, you don't have to. want us okay. to. Okay. Well, you can. But you're a doctor, don't you know? I, you know, it's all that doctorial it's not shit. A difficult so, um, but this is plastic. We don't <clears> know <throat> the history of these. These might like conk out. I've had good luck. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this one record and each do it. We're gonna start at the same time. Uh, I'm not gonna have you sit here for the entire duration. Uh, how long does it take for the full cycle? So this both cleans and dries, so it's one minute of cleaning. You can expand that if it's really grimy up to five minutes of cleaning. And then it's a five minute dry cycle. Okay, no mine is either a two minute or a five minute cleaning, and I believe a five minute dry cycle. So you're gonna start with the one minute? Yeah, I'm just gonna Okay, do I'm gonna do the one minute too. So we're gonna get our records. Now, we're gonna both, you, you'll watch us what we do. We, we use, now here's a good thing. I've been watching the the Fremers of the world, the Michael Ingrews of the world, the expert uh, mixologists and cleaning and sur to surfactant or not surfactant. Uh, the vinyl archivist, Patrick, told me to use a certain thing, a turgic clean. Uh, Michael Fremer and uh, Ingrews say no surfactants. What's your take on using doctor? What, do you have a medical license? I do. Okay. He has a medical license. We want to know his his thing. Now, I started using Turgiclean initially. And I did like eight to 10 drops in one gallon of distilled water. I no longer use it. I just use plain water unless there's a lot of grimy crap. And then I might use that jug rather than this jug. So he's going to share that with you, what he his take on what he uses while I prep my machine. Doc? Okay. Well, um, so w when I first started using it, I used this little bottle of cleaning fluid that comes with the machine. They send you two or three of these with the original purchase. And they instruct you to place one of these in with a, about a gallon. Uh, and what is that? This is some, I, you know, they really don't say. Again, all of these things are some sort of a surfactant, right? So. It does actually- So you don't even know what you're putting in your body or in your machine. Well, they instructed me to use it and I trusted them, but- But, but people don't trust <laughs> government and uh, manufacturers anymore. That's what I've been reading. Probably, probably a wise choice. So, <laughs> so this, this, you know, surfactant, it, it makes sense on, uh, on a physics basis. I mean, the surfactant reduces the surface tension of the water that you're using, which allows it to get deeper into the grooves. That's the concept. And I, when I got rid of that, when I used that up, rather, I replaced it with some other things. This is from 
Mofi, right? That's a record cleaning. Yeah, but Mo Mobile Fidelity is the record company that lied to everybody. Yeah, so, so are you going to trust them on cleaning I, your record? They, they lied, lied, lied. There you go. Well, whatever you do, if you use this, you want to use just a pinch, right? It's just a tiny so pinch. So pinch is not a scientific amount. Like if you're operating on someone, that's you a, can't just say a pinch, right? That's a pinch right there. Okay. <laughs> so, so at any rate, what I did find when I used just a pinch was that over time, uh, it seemed to build up within the record cleaner and I would get sudsing and it would come out with some residue on the record. And I've heard other collectors say, well, that's okay. You just clean it off with water when you're done. And I, that just becomes a little too much for me. So I stopped using surfactant, um, I don't know, three or four years ago at least. I, during the second machine I had, because that was the one that really got contaminated seemingly. And I, I rinsed the heck out of that over and over to get rid of so all of it. So do you only use distilled water only? Pretty much now I only use distilled water. That's, what I, that's what I use. But yeah. I think it varies. We've heard scientific... The guy that wrote the book on record cleaning, the scientific, and I, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. You might be watching, you may not, says you should use a surfactant of some sort. And I only use this occasionally, but I've been doing all clean water. But I think, you know, it, it's up to you what works for you, right? There's a little bit of a, uh, we all have our, our, our way of doing things. So why don't you get your machine prepped? Yeah. I mean, I, I would say I believe that surfactant probably leads to a cleaner record, um, but I have found the performance with just distilled water to be completely satisfactory. For That's a lot of water. So yeah, you use a takes, whole gallon. I use a just gallon. a little bit. Yeah, no, this is, and yeah. You're going to owe me $3 for that water. Well, I, I'm good for it. Jesus, I don't, I don't know. I we'll think you see. still owe me money we'll for see. the Disney glass. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how the day goes. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So... At any rate, I, uh, so, okay, remember, this is Br yeah. Brigitte Bardot. Okay, now, wait, just get it ready. Starting. It's all tuned. It's okay. all ready. Tell me when you're ready. I'm ready when you are. And, let's see, I'm going to push. Oh, one. I already touched it. I'm sorry. Okay. That's I'm what sorry. she said. I didn't mean to touch it. Okay. <laughs> That's what she said. And you saw, I had to push that down. This is one of the aggravating features of this of this cleaner. Talk louder because over this, this is like going to the dentist, this noise. <laughs> Can you see me? Well, now what's interesting, okay. Your record is spinning faster. Mine is ever so slow. Do you think that makes a difference? I have no idea. I, I truly have no idea. This one spins faster than my prior version, I believe. That's my sense. Is there only one speed, Doc? It sometimes speeds up. Just watch. It may yet speed up. So this is a one-speed system. Now, um, you have a there's a lot more like heavier water droplets on your record than mine. Mine's a different See, type of thing. I think yours is going to dry better. I think yours is going to dry better. Now I find at the end I do have some drops, and I have to use a microfiber cloth a little bit occasionally at the very end to get uh, the. Um, so we got a dot and a deca, deca and dot records today. That's a pretty good pair of labels. Yeah, I, I, now this is more metal. This is this is a sturdier machine than this piece of cheap ass plastic. It's heavy. I, what, gonna, it's doing. It sounds it's different. It's slow, right? But sometimes it speeds up. So it may get kind of speed up again. I don't know. But um, kids, don't try this at home unless you have an okay. ultrasonic machine. It's already clean or drying. Stay away from the record. <laughs> that's a that sounds like a like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. That's that's a louder dryer than mine. I said it's loud, See? right? Now, okay. The thing about mine, mine will probably take longer because it's still going through this unless I pick, I pressed it for too long. Oh. Okay, now it's emptying the container back in the uh, reservoir. Right. It's sucking down the water, and then it'll go into the drying cycle. Mine, yep. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead. Mine does a very similar thing. There's an internal reservoir, so the, the, the water is pumped into the cleaning chamber. They do the cleaning, and then when they start the drying, they 
but the water is pushed back into this internal reservoir. So I, we were also talking with one gallon of water, I will clean at least 100 records without worrying about it. Now with it. one reservoir, I go anywhere between 6 and 15 records depending on how dirty that is, and that can change the filter. I don't change the filter very often, I rinse it, and then I change a little foamy filter thing. So now it's going through the dry cycle, okay? He's a PC, I'm a Mac. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Eh, it's not a bad analogy. Yeah. <laughs> PC, more complicated, $7,000. Plunky. $420. No, I haven't done thousands of records, so I haven't done 10,000 records, so my guess is this won't last for 10,000 records, but I have no idea. If you have, I'm really curious, any of you have a um, humming dinger, humming guru, let me know if any of you have gone past several thousand records. I think it's sort of a new item, and I'm really curious if you've cleaned that many records. Um, we're gonna like have a, uh, we were told not to mix cocktails during the cleaning process because we like gin and it's a clear liquid and we're using surfactant. We're actually not using surfactant, so it's actually safer. But we're going to have a little, like, back on the sofa conversation and follow-up after we clean these records and talk about the process. And we'd like you all to comment on the smackdown, the battle between the humming guru and the blast. Glass, glass, glass. Spell it. G L A S S. With a new one. Glass. So, Donkey uh, Shane, for all you viewers, we got Germany versus Hong Kong versus China here. Um, and we'll see how this, what we'll do is we'll hold the records up to you and see how this works. So, you know, I'm just wondering, based on that your last comments there, I'm wondering if surf acting in gin might actually get you drunk faster. Please, do not use any surfactant in an alcohol beverage. It is not for consumption. Please. I agree. That's probably not A doctor worth it. shouldn't even joke it's about that. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. You don't drink. I mean, the only doctors I remember drinking during operations are uh, Hawkeye and... Uh, in Mass, which Hawkeye, which other guy? Hawkeye and Trapper John. And Trapper John. Yeah. They would have martinis and then go in the OR. Yeah. Every surgeon, I, I think every surgeon that's watched Mass wishes our lives were actually like that. Now, do you, Doc, I've asked this before. When you're in the middle of surgery, do you play music? I do play music. Every, I think almost every OR plays music, uh, at least sometimes. Do you ever clean records with an ultrasonic during your uh, operating? I have not done that. Okay. No. Dr. Robert here, I tell you, this is educational for everyone. I'm the newbie. I've only cleaned maybe 300 records so far with the Hunting Guru. I've had great success, but I've only been, I don't clean new records. Uh, if you buy a new brand new record, do you clean it? That's a great question. So I, I, I honestly don't usually. I, I, I will play the record and then if, it's, if it makes noise, that I don't like. Yeah, there you go. So it pops up a little it bit. It does. It's done. It dissociates. It's faster. Well, a little bit. Well, we I, don't but know. I could, I, if I had a really dirty record, I would have cleaned it longer. But you can clean longer, too. Yeah, I can clean longer, too. Yeah. So Bridget Bardot is faster than the Fisting album of, uh, I mean, Fist, <laughs> Fist City <laughs> album by uh, this one, Loretta Lynn. By the way, there's a great Loretta Lynn. Uh, TV show, I think it was HBO, with uh, Jessica Chastain playing the lead role. I highly recommend it. I'm still drying here. Why don't you show the record? Get close to the yeah, camera there. It, it looks pretty dang clean, I gotta say, and it looks in pretty fine condition. I, you know, I was gonna say, I you use a towel, I just use a t-shirt to dry it. Oh, up. God. <laughs> I use a, micro, a clean microfiber cloth. This is cotton. Yeah, but you've been sweating all day. Uh, we don't know where that t-shirt's been. Yeah, not all day. Mostly it's been with me. Were you in the OR wearing that? A little bit today, yeah. No, not wearing this. I think I'm having a longer drying cycle or something. It might be, but you're... 
Well, yours was a little longer washing cycle, I think. Yeah, but I thought I pressed it once. See, once is two minutes, yeah, mine's twice is five. To one minute. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Taking it out. I got a few little... Now, this record is somewhat scratched, so obviously you're not going to get the scratches out. Um, you'll get some of... The... Now, this is a scratch record. I don't know if this is going to help, but again, Loretta Lynn Fist City uh, is somewhat cleaner, and of course it can help. Obviously, this is like at least a 50-year-old record plus on DECA. So, uh, any last words on this? We're going to go, like, take a moment, cut to the sofa, have a little after party, a little cocktail. We don't want to mix our surfactants. Anything else you want to say about the two units? You know, you really haven't had experience with mine. Well, I haven't. I haven't. And and I have to say, uh, you know, the price point, uh, you know, makes me a little jealous. I mean, that didn't exist when I, when I bought this. Um, and there are models that are even more expensive than the than this one now and uh, there might be some others that are sort of in between i think there are well there's the uh what's the 3200 one the degritter it, it, i have no experience with the degritter that's, that's ultrasonic. 3200 that's ultrasonic so that's like in between yeah. well it's way above i mean this is yeah. like this it's, is the bargain this is the economy model and for me someone who doesn't like cleaning or hasn't liked cleaning uh, records. This was a uh, perfect entry into it. So, you ready for that? Oh, yeah. Just well, I think I think your record collection and what you tend to buy is already cleaner. I mean, my my you know approach in what I buy is much more used and so basically you're buying shit ass records <laughs> well where i'm buying well really new pristine clean records that aren't moldy and smutty and smelling and bringing mold into my house right well i think you're gonna make me cry but but <laughs> you know it's uh i'd rather it, instead of making you cry i'd rather make you a cocktail yeah okay let's so do that. Uh, we'll be right back yeah, sounds good Okay, we just did the cleaning, and we hope you enjoyed that and got some knowledge. We're going to take questions, but actually we're not going to take questions because no one's live here. We're going to ask each other questions. And while we do this, we're going to ask questions about the cleaning process, what we like about the audio desk glass, the glass, glass audio desk uh, that uh, Dr. Robert have and the humming guru that Mazzy here has. Um, first, we're going to do a shaken... Gin martini. I shouldn't even have to say gin because t talk about the difference between a gin and vodka martini, Doc. Well, my understanding is one's made with gin and the other's made with vodka. Very, good, very good. <laughs> but isn't isn't kind of vodka like a poser's martini? It's not a real martini. You have to. In fact, if you want, if you just say you or if you order a martini, it's always gin. Now, if they ask you, do you want gin or vodka? They shouldn't have to do that, but you should know better. If you want a vodka martini, you have to specify you want a vodka martini. Did you, you knew that, right? Well, yeah. I, I, you know, well, of course, it was James Bond's drink, right? But he would sometimes do vodka with a, a Vesper with, you know. I thought he was always Lillette. a vodka martini. Well, it, it depends on the book. A Lillette with a little, you know. But anyway, so we're doing this. Uh, we're doing a somewhat dry martini. He's very dry. I'm somewhat, but I'm compromising. I'm going all dry because that's what the doc wants now. I didn't want to feel like doing two, so. Mazzy is always an elegant host. He always compromises his own preferences for those of his guests. I have to say, you got to respect that. Oh, uh, well. And um, it depends on the season. I used to be always one olive, but uh, now sometimes in the spring and summer I go for a twist, but we're doing one olive each. And none of those fucking, you know, olive stuffed with Parmesan cheese or garlic or, or, or cheese shit. Come on, that's like, that's the worst thing in the world. That's, I bet you someone out there does it. The worst thing in the world is when you go and you, you order an apple teeny. The archivist, I met the archivist when she was actually a, a bartender. And the worst thing is when someone orders an apple teeny, they laugh at you behind your back. So, Doc, now, do you know what these glasses are called? Gimlets? Goblets? 
<laughs> goblins. Uh, okay. Glasses? The, the style is, oh God, you're so, I, you're a doctor. You, I thought doctors, yeah. are, they're like grease from the pharmaceutical industry. I saw, I saw, um, What's the Harrison Ford movie? Uh, the when he was oh, when he fugitive? killed the fugitive, yeah. and all the, it, the pharma companies were the yeah. bad guys in that, right? Well, they, yeah, they are bad guys. I, I, you, you Sorry, know, anyway. friends, but mostly yeah. bad guys. Anyway, this the style of this glass is called a Nicanora, and that's based on the Thin Man, the Nicanora. That's the glass. That's where they got yes. the name. There's all different styles of glasses. This is a Nicanora. So, Doc, cheers. Cheers. So, who's Nick and who's Nora? <laughs> So, let's talk about record cleaning. So that's a nice martini. By isn't that a nice? Mm, oh, nice. That, that is nice. This is like, and this. Okay, I'm gonna tell you, buy the big friggin' dry gin at Costco, London dry gin. I think it's like a, it's a famous brand. I forgot which one. It's not Sapphire or Tanqueray, but it's in the big. It's like it's cheap. So you, you know, you buy your trendy gins too, and this is fine. I like you know all the trendy, small regional gins and and things but you know have a big bottle of friggin costco kirkland uh, gin as your backup is and it's good it actually is really good right it is delicious it is good it is good and it'll last a while it'll la well, it'll last at least a weekend you know yeah. <laughs> it better so we're on the, now the reason i wanted to separate uh the martini section from the ultrasonic wrecking cleaning record cleaning section is because when the archivist and I did our first intro to the humming guru our first experience we made martinis and we got gobsmacked and shit faced and wait a minute <laughs> no we got like hit you got give, you people gave you crap yeah yeah michael fremer and everyone else and michael are you watching there gave us crap for Take that video down. You shouldn't mix or surfact. You shouldn't use a surfactant, and you shouldn't drink alcohol while you're make your at the same time because you're but I doing a clear. Surfactant clearly. makes you drunk faster. <laughs> yeah. Please, no, kids, don't do this at home. Um, so we want to just kind of recap. So talk about your cleaning process. Come to the camera, like let's 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 get into our audience. Oh, let's be intimate. Yeah. Okay. Talk about every you. Let's say you just okay. You just got back from Ireland. Mm. You bought records, or tell us about that experience and how many records you bought. Yeah. And what do you do with those records once you get home? So, yeah, it was quite an experience. And um, I probably went to a half a dozen record stores over there over the course of seven, eight, nine days, I think. And um, the, uh, you know, uh, I mean, the, the fun part as an American collector is all of the records that you can't find in the States or that are hard to find in the States. So I got a first pressing plum label copy of Led Zeppelin's first record uh, in British pressing. Never, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I've maybe seen one once here. Um, I got a first pressing of uh, Thin Lizzy's first record, UK pressing, uh, don't have that. Uh, so a few things like that. And, and those, you know, it's because you're on native soil and that's where they were pressed and made and sold. But then... Yeah, but you're in Ireland. You're, you're not in the... Well, it's, it's Ireland, not uh, England, yes. And, and these were UK. Don't tell them that. You saw Van Morrison live. Was he pissed if you would have told him that? Um, well, I, you know... You I'm can't even say to Van Morrison, hey, I have some Warner Brothers records of yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do. So, uh, Van Morrison apparently doesn't like to acknowledge his Warner Brothers work or maybe... Which is his best freaking work. It is his best work. Uh, this is what his handler told me over there. Like, his handler. Oh, his handler. His was, wank, the, 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 the handler of the wanker. And I love Van Morrison. I love Van Morrison, too. I think Van Morrison is going to win the Nobel Prize now that Bob Dylan has kind of cracked that open. I don't think based on writers. recent history that, that you, Van Morrison is going to win. The politics may not. Yeah. not well, the politics keep him out. But his work deserves it. But... Um, yeah, we, I stood. Oh, in, for literature, maybe it is. It's beautiful literature. Fifty years worth of beautiful poetry. Yeah, I, he, uh, he's. I, mean, I love Van Morrison. Yeah, so he's amazing. But um, you know, I, I was telling Mazzy earlier. Uh, I stood outside the stage door entrance at uh, the first concert. We, my wife and I, saw him three times in Belfast, and you know, his home city. And it's like a milkshake. There's extra. There was, we're off the topic of uh, records now. But, but it's okay. But, but, People like to hear p us talk about music. It's yeah. the music, it's the cleaning record, stupid. It's the music, stupid. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Well, it was, it was a great, fun experience. So, you know, Belfast, his home city, uh, where he grew up, and uh, these two, we saw him in two different theaters, three nights, two theaters. Wow. And neither theater had any promotional uh, poster or marquee, you know, but people just knew that Van was playing there. There were a number of people who had come from the States and from elsewhere to see the shows, but most was just his home crowd. And, you know, these were in very small theaters, which, you know, 500 or 1,000 seats, which... Were anti-vaxxers let, let in free? <laughs> there was no discount, okay. no, as far as I'm aware. Uh, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. Oh, come on, chill out. You know, this is, this is entertainment. I'm, yeah, it is entertaining. <laughs> so, so um, no. Some but, people hate when I interrupt like that, yeah, but whatever. Uh, yeah, we, yeah we, we have a thing. So, yeah, we have a thing. <laughs> So, the doc and I. It's, uh, you know. It's, uh, Clear! <laughs> <laughs> it works. Mostly it works. <laughs> so that's the best you can hope for is mostly. Mostly. So um, at any rate, I'm outside the stage door the first night, and I walk up, and there are these two Irishmen there, and they see me walk up with this bag. <laughs> they walk into a bar. It's a joke. It could be a joke. I, I walk up with a bag. I brought 13 record covers. Prevent to sign, I'm hoping. That's I'm excess. Hoping. And my it, my wife go, told me that too. My that's wife, excess. That's my, rude. My wife was really like, what the hell are you doing? But I, I, I'm in there in line. Uh, not in line. I walk up and these guys are there. And, and the, one of them says, you're here to get your something signed, huh? And I said, because I had this bag. And, I, and he, I said, yeah, I was hoping I could get Van to sign some record covers. He goes, well, these guys knew Van's whole schedule. So the, the, the guy says, well, he usually gets here about 3.30. And he drives up, his, his driver drives him up in a black Audi, and he's going to walk right past us, and he's going to barely acknowledge us, but he's not going to stop and talk. He's not going to take your record covers. But his handler is going to come out before Van gets here, and he's going to take them from you. He'll take them in, and once Van has signed them, he'll bring them back for you. So sure enough, the handler comes out, and he says, what do you got? And I said, well, I've got, I've got some record covers. And he said, well... Anything but Warner Brothers, because Van doesn't want to sign <laughs> Warner Brothers. And if you give those to me, I'm just going to throw them in the trash can. He said, okay, I'm not going to give those to you. Those so, are his best friggin' records. They kind of are. Saint know, Dominic's Dance, Preview yeah, is Saint maybe my favorite. Yeah, yeah, Tupelo those. Honey Tupelo and Honey. Moondance and, yeah. and, of course, uh, uh, Astral Weeks. Astral Weeks. Oh, God. Yeah. That, so I had all those with me, thinking maybe. But, but so he told me that. So I gave him, the, I had the two... Uh, early them records that Van's on with Gloria on one and and uh, and then are these I, originals? Those are originals. UKs? No, mine were not UKs. The, yeah. So they were the these um, were US uh, pressings. Uh, Parrot. They're on Parrot. Parrot yeah. Records. Parrot 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 records. I know my shit. Yeah, he's got it down. And and then I had the first US record with Brown Eyed Girl on Bang Records, Blowing Your Mind, right? Produced by Burt Burns. Right, Burt Burns, who kind of took advantage or tried to take advantage of Van. But he wrote some great songs. Oh, my you know, God. Burt, Burt, watch the documentary. The, there's a Burt, have you seen the Burt Burns song? No. Oh, God, it's so good. Watch that documentary. Yeah. Uh, Neil Diamond stuff. Oh, God. Oh, well, God. okay. We'll, we'll forgive him that. But <laughs> early Nick, solitary man. <laughs> I mean, Fuck I mean, you, hey, Doc. I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, right. I, got, I got nothing against uh, Neil Diamond, you know, but. Uh, and then, the, but the funny part, or the punchline of the four records is I brought over this record by the band Cahoots that Van, you know, was buddies with Robbie Robertson and the rest of the band. And he sings on a track. Sings on one track that he wrote with Robbie Robertson. And I'm not going to come up with the name of the track, but... Cal, uh, I know the track, but yeah. Yeah, I, it's, I've listened to it. And it's it a great is, song. It's a great song. It's a, and Van Morrison sings on it. You can hear his voice clearly. Oh, he's an he's a integral part of that yeah, song. It's, totally. am, it's amazing. Yeah. And, and so I give this to the handler and I said, um, this, you know, by the way, uh, I think Van will appreciate this. It shows that I'm a true fan. You know, this isn't really his record, but he's on one cut. And the handler goes, eh, whatever. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he takes, don't give a shit. He didn't. And he took the four records. He's a handler. He's, he's not, not a handler. musicologist. He's a handler. And Van shows up and I, I didn't even recognize Van. The car shows up and the guys around me are clearly responding and know what's going on. And I'm sort of like, oh, what's going on? And Van is not a tall man. No, he's not. He's, he, he's, he's, he, uh, it, it, the last show I saw before lockdown was Van Morrison at Yoshi's in Oakland. And he was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. He, he's very, more, he does all, even the hits he does still, there's kind of a bluesy jazz version of it. It's great. He's great. Yeah. But he was, you he didn't know, talk to anybody though. He well, he came right past and, and he nodded to us and waved to us and said, "See you inside." 
And uh, so he was cool. Uh, but yeah, it took me a minute. And you know, he was had, had his hat on. He didn't have his sunglasses on. Uh, but um, so that was kind of a moment. And then sure enough, a few minutes later, the handler brought my records back and I uh, put them back in the bag. And, and so my wife applauded that. But then she didn't want me to keep trying to get the other records. Yeah, there's two, 14 away. records. That's much, that's, yeah. that's like those people go to baseball card shows and want like 36 <laughs> things of Joe Montana. Yeah, or It's so, probably a little too much. Um, so I, and I know we went off track, but it's about the music. And my uh, quick Van Morrison story is one of for ABC Records in 78, 79, 80, er, until MCA days. One of my accounts I was sent to was called Caledonia Music in San Anselmo, California, Marin County. And that's when Van Morrison was living in, in uh, Marin, in Fairfax, uh, over the Golden Gate Bridge. And he brought his parents over from the old country, Ireland, and bought them and started a record store, and they worked in Caledonia Music. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would, I probably went there three or four times, tiny store, and I met his parents, and of course, when you walk into the left, there was a huge poster on the wall of Van, and they were so proud of their son. And they were actually very nice, and all that we talked about. I don't remember what I sold them for ABC. That was the days of Steely Dan, and Jimmy Buffett, and Tom Petty, and you know, Impulse jazz, a lot of country, Don Williams stuff. But uh, so meeting his parents, they were super nice, so proud of their son. He brought them away into beautiful, idyllic Marin County, California in the early 1970s. I didn't so, know that. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, that is. That, that is sweet. And I did see Van. There's a live radio. He did a live radio show at the Pacific Recorders and I, with about 50 people, not even that, 40, 50 people. It was broadcast on KSAN, and I was at that show. First time I ever saw Van Morrison. And it's a live radio show from 1970 or 71 at KSAN. Seek it out. I was in the audience. Love Van Morrison, despite he made my wanker list <laughs> two years in a row. But I love him. Yeah. He's... Yeah. Anyway, I, I, did we, any closeout? But <coughs> did you clean your Van Morrison records? Well, I, I, my Van Morrison records were out of my collection, so they were long ago cleaned uh, and cataloged and put away. Um, and I left the vinyls at home. I just took the covers. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You left the what at home? The vinyls. The vinyls? The records. Vin you never, vinyls, vinyls is not a plural. The LPs? Vinyl. I left vinyls. the vinyl copies. I left the... You don't say vinyls. The records? You say vinyl records or vinyl. vinyl. Records. I left the vinyl at home. Okay. V There's no such thing yeah, as like vinyls. Vinyls plural is not a thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. You'll, you'll get. I, uh, no. I, I stand correct. Someone there would comment. I stand and, believe me, I get commented because yeah. I I switched yeah. off something. I I got to select. I said Guinevere instead of uh, something or other on um, Lady Gwen, whatever it was. I mean, you guys are good. You guys correct it. When I twist my lips and I get inverted di dialectic or what's it called? What's it? Um, dyslexic. Um, and you guys call me on it. And that's fair. I fair. So I think we're going to wind down. This is going to be a long video anyway. But any last? Okay. You're going in today and you're going to buy an ultrasonic. You don't have one. What would you buy right now? Oh, golly. That is... I, would you, you know, pay the big like uh, five well, grand? You know, I'm kind of already in, right? And so for me, um, and particularly, I, I feel like I have a good relationship with the 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 U.S. seller. That's like having good a relationship with your drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair comment. But <laughs> it's a fair comment. Oh, but, it's great. You'll love it. It's just another $1,500 more. If, if I could get a first version of the glass audio desk cleaner for $1,500 or $1,700, I think that's a steal. So for me, I would. That's where I'm going to stay now. Going in, it's fresh, you know, it is actually look. We see it over here on the table. Yeah, it's it's kind of beautiful. Attractive. It looks like a small nuclear device. I'm kind of drawn to it. It is. It's got the blue and green light. <laughs> mine, mine looks like a, a toaster, <laughs> right? Yours looks like a um, a confection oven. Mine looks like a friggin' toaster. People, it is not that much different. <laughs> no, but do you think, sure. now, we, we don't know, because we didn't really listen after at this point, but yeah, we, we don't know. I mean, do you think yours cleans a record better than them? I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. And, you know, I, I tend to think probably not. I mean, my sense, of, but, I, you know, I guess there's differences maybe in the frequency of the ultrasonic waves that are being generated. I, you know, maybe, maybe that creates differences. I don't know. Uh, maybe the speed of the revolutions creates differences. I, you know, I have no idea. Uh, those are technical details. I have no idea. But 
What I know about my cleaning system is I, it does a good job as a cleaner. It's a pain in the neck in a certain, in some ways, including the fact that it breaks down regularly, seemingly after several years use. And uh, you have to tap the record to get it to start, which has been true from the very first copy I've had through this one. And I don't so you give it a potch. You have you to give it a potch. A potch yeah. and tuchus. Yes. You know what that means? A, a slap on the butt. God, he speaks Yiddish. Every doctor knows. <laughs> Even if he's not a Jewish doctor, you're in the OR, there's always a Jewish doctor around. So potch and tuchus. Well, you know, I, I try, because I'm not deeply religious in any... Uh, I'm not religious either not religious, at all. But I do try, actually, I, I, I try to make my patients feel comfortable in whatever space they're in. So if I have a Muslim patient, I want them to feel that, you know, I understand something about their background. The same for Jewish patients. Uh, the same for Irish patients, by the way. <laughs> But um, what about uh, record collectors? Yeah, this uh, pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah, pretty much the same. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to close out here. Thank you, Doc, uh, for joining me. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers. For listening. Yeah, we had a great time. It was fun tonight, it right? Was. Anyway, fun. Mazzy loves you, and uh, this guy does his little thing. <laughs> I do the peace sign, whatever it is. See you next time. Uh, let me know what you if you clean your records. Remember, I'm a newbie at this, and I have converted to hummingism. Take care. See you next time. <laughs> I can't believe that record is called, um, uh, what's that little Red Lynn record? Fitzing. Fit Fit oh, Fit sorry. I thought we'd turn it off. <laughs>